Hello everyone, welcome to Redbus TS channel. In this video, we will look at the latest announcement by USCIS on the EAD automatic extension duration from 180 days to 540 days. Yeah. So this applies to H4 EAD, advanced uh, adjustment of status EAD and other uh, types of EADs. We will look at all of these uh, details in, in, in today's video. So this is what we will cover. Uh, you know why they're increasing this and uh, you know how does this rule work who will it applies to and what are the categories that are involved and what you need to submit for i9 uh, and also including the next steps and guidance right uh, for and uh, yeah if you haven't subscribed to our channel do subscribe for getting regular updates so firstly this is the news uh, if you look at USA's website this is what was announced yesterday and uh, you know which is a, a pretty good uh, new, news release you could you could read uh, in detail but we'll summarize what is in there in, in this video so firstly, why are they increasing this, right? I mean, uh, you know, if you if you recollect, uh, you know, earlier in March, uh, there was a big announcement done by, uh, you know, the USS director that they want to streamline the whole uh, processing times and everything. And now suddenly they are increasing this. Uh, what is the rationale behind it? So what they said is uh, uh, before 2019, uh, you know, what you're seeing on the screen is uh, the processing times uh, for, for the, their top three EADs that are processed by USCIS. So what they said is before 2019, they had an average internal, um, uh, I would say the processing time uh, metric was about th less than three months. And now if you see on the, in the table, it's anywhere from 10.1 to 11.5 or um, nothing's less than six, six months, yeah? six to 10 months, uh, six to 12 months or more, right? So this is uh, some of the statistics they've said, are telling that and they cited a lot of reasons, COVID, a lack of staffing, funding, uh, typical reasons, right, that USA has, uh, gives, right? So all of these, they say that, so this is the current challenge that they have and their processing times have exceeded. And uh, now the challenge is uh, when this exceeds, when this exceeds 180 days, uh, the people who have EAD will lose their jobs and, uh, you know, right now very very important for the economy and all of the thing right so this is one thing also one other important thing we want to cover is the data from uh, h4 eads right so this is one of our um, uh, data points of, for our key uh, audience right h4 eads and l2 eads right so if you see the processing times for h4 eads and l2 EADs is no different it's also anywhere from uh, just example this tracked on visa grader uh, where you can see that it's anywhere from 7.5 to 10 months right so these are standalone eads so you can see how it's been fluctuating in the last few months you can go we'll put a link in the description as well you can check so over all, um, all in all, uh, you know, this is one of the reasons that they're doing it. And what they said is, um, you know, as per their data, uh, about 66,000 pending EADs were there uh, even after 180 days. And this is in December. And um, what it means is all of the 66,000 people will lose their jobs if they don't do it. Right? Uh, second thing is they also expect about 14,500 every month in 2022. So that's going to be quite, quite significant because EADs are not just for H4 and L2s. They are also given for a lot of categories as SLM holders, adjustment of status, many other types of rights. So we look at that in detail. But the idea is that it's going to impact a lot of people. So the comparison they gave was uh, in 2020, it was less like less than 3,000 or around 3,000, right? So, so, so it's a big uh, you know, surge in that and they really don't want to really have all these people lose jobs. And also if you recall uh, you know USS was taken to court uh, by H4 AD holders who lost their jobs and eventually they had to like increase that and give that 180 day automatic extension yeah so this is a settlement that came up uh, you know uh, late 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 last year right so uh, um, and also again USS is saying that is an interim step that they want to do this and once they once it all is out uh, you know uh, they will actually come back to normal yeah so that's that's the reason behind it now how does this uh, I mean what is the rule right the rule is uh, actually called it's a temporary rule first of all uh, means it's going to be taken out after some time it's not like a permanent regulation or anything it's the title is temporary increase of automatic extension period for of uh, Employment authorization and documentation for certain renewal applicants. So that's a that's a, it's a pretty big uh, complex title, right? Uh, anyways, effective date is May fourth, and this is how it looks in Federal Register. So when you wrote the article on the blog, it was yesterday. Uh, basically, from today, you know, it's actually public, and you can see that this is in public in Federal Register uh, with fully, um, you know, uh, with full details on it. And in fact, you can submit a comment as well if there is something that you don't like about it, or if there is some suggestions to them as well. Now, in terms of how this will work, right? So they're amending the existing regulations for a temporary increase uh, for certain eligible EAD applicants uh, from 180 days to 540 days. So what it means is this is only applicable for people who are eligible today for this 180 days automatic extension. And they're giving a, doing this temporarily and increasing this 180 days to 540 days. And uh, this will only be applicable to uh, eligible EAD applicants who have this, you know, it's not applicable to anyone who have an EAD at all, right? So this is very, very important to understand. And also not for all of them also, we'll look at that categories in detail. Um, 
later and this will be given for applicants this 540 days will be given to applicants who file the ead renewals or extensions whatever you call them starting from may 4th which is today and all the way until october 26 2023 until that date so this is basically uh, for the next uh, you know like i would say one and a half year more or less right so this is what they they're saying right and uh, and in terms of uh, uh, when this will end is basically this 540 days of automatic extension is not like you automatically get it all of the way, right? So it will end when there is a decision on your case, meaning let's say USS denies your EAD for whatever reason, right? Then that EAD, uh, that 540 days will end or a decision is made, right? Uh, or at the end of 540 days, let's say you hit that even though let's say USS does not process this at the end of 540 days, then also it will end. So essentially whenever the uh, denial decision comes in or the 540 days hit, that's when this, uh, you know, this, uh, you know this automatic extension will end now in terms of other things right so after the uh, this uh, this thing will revert to eight uh, after 18 months meaning starting from today all the way until October 26 2023 uh, you know this will be available and after that it will revert back to 180 days so if you file on October 27th 2023 next year this won't be available yeah? just to clarify that this is what they say uh, and also what they say is uh, uh, one more important thing to note is right uh, so in if you look at the federal register the rule is technically uh, technically i mean these are technical terms right they are, it's valid till 2025 and the reason for that is uh, uh, 540 days is uh, what you usually get Let, let's say somebody is filing on october 26th of 2023 so from 26th of 2023 if you add 540 days it comes to like you know uh, uh, you know mid 2025 and then if you need to also add people can also file six months before so that is that 180 days how soon they can file so they're factoring 720 days technically to get that uh, you know to, to to have it valid in the federal register so technically it's it's going to be valid till october 15 2025 but you know applicants can only file until october 26 2023 so again this is just to make sure that the uh, the rule does not go over it even after that uh, particular day right? so this is what it looks like in the federal register today like the screenshot of it and you can read the text right uh, and also this is from yesterday right uh, when they only had the pdf file uh, we took it from that it's also the regulatory document as well so we, if you look at our article it looks like what is on the right side right uh, with, with the document but uh, uh, today it's published so you, you know it's both of both are technically the same right now who do, who all does it apply to uh, you know it, it's applied to anybody with a pending i-765 so if you applied for ead renewal and is pending with uh, uscs then it's available uh, you know that that's one thing second one if for anyone who file timely, meaning if they file before the expiration of EAD with USS anytime in the 18 month period starting from today, which is May 4th until October 26th. So this is for uh, for applicants between now and October 26th, right? And also in interest of fairness, what they've done is it is also apl applicable to uh, eligible EAD applicants who had timely filed in the past. And I mean, which is basically before May 4th and whose year expired or that 180 days expired so they can resume their employment authorization right and they will be able to do that so essentially what they're doing is they're considering all the applicants who filed before may 4th and who still who still who have not reached the 540 days right so that is what the idea is uh, in terms of effective date uh, you know the it's may 4th is the effective date for this right so which is basically today um, now in terms of categories right so these are a list of categories i mean you can read the article uh, the to lead the entire list right so refugees asylums uh, deportation removal pending you know a tens so these are all uh, you know there are two things right one is uh, when you fill the for a 765 form you put in a number a3 but on the card it shows as capital a3 so both are technically same so don't be confused so a18 is for l2 l2 spouses right and the second category that's very important for our um, for our audience is c26 which is uh, h4 holders right so and adjustment of Status is another one that is an important one is C9. So all these three are also included as part of it. And what is not included is F1 STEM OPT applicants, right? So F1 STEM OPT applicants are the C03A, B, and C03C. These are not eligible for this 540 days uh, automatic extension. So very, very important to know. So there is a, a, a link there where they have this updated. So we'll anyways put the link in the description. You can read the article that has all the links and everything. Yeah. So this is a complete list of uh, things. Now, in terms of I-9 compliance, uh, so I-9 compliance is where what employers are, are, are supposed to do to keep that in in, in, uh, in in proper status. So all you need to submit is your expired EAD card that indicates you are eligible as per that category, your receipt notice, right? And uh, the form I-94. These are the three documents that you need. That's it. It's no different. It's basically the same what you had. And also what they said is you also need to attach the web page, right? So this is because for the old applicants who had it, uh, they need to attach the, attach the, uh, 
attach that web page uh, so that you know they they also have that as as a proof right so that's one thing right uh, next steps in terms of guidance right so uh, us has planned to issue new i7 for all the for all the applicants from today they will they will very likely right again we don't know if it's from exactly from today or uh, not uh, they will issue i7 as a receipt notices with an explanation of this 540 days so that's what we'll have but they will not issue for uh, you know already existing ones who already got these um, you know ead receipt notices so so uh, they won't uh, send these for uh, you know like retroactively um, retroactively for the old ones right so but they still continue to be valid even though it says 180 days on the receipt notice it will be still be valid uh, all you need to do is attach the web page for that right so don't be worried if you if you don't have this all all the matter is uh, if they filed it and you have status or not now, one important FAQ that, uh, you know, since we posted article, many people have asked is one thing, right? Okay, uh, does this mean there is no I-94 check anymore once, uh, you know, for H-4 EDs? Uh, essentially, they're telling is, okay, I have H-4, H-4 and uh, uh, H-4 ED filed together and they're expiring soon uh, or they're pending right now and I'm eligible for auto extension even though my I-94 expires. So basically, uh, one important thing to note is there are no changes to the requirements from the past for H4 EAD automatic extension. So all whatever was there, uh, you know, uh, you know, they all continue to be there. Only they increase the date from 180 to 540 days. So you need to be in valid H4 status for this to work. Very very important. If you don't have valid status, which is valid I-94, you cannot leverage this uh, 540 days. So there are some hacks that uh, our our teams have been doing or our community members have been doing. We have a group on this as well. Um, so where you know you travel to mexico and come back before your 95 expires along with your spouse you could get that that is one thing that works very well or you can go to your home country and then get stamping and then uh, you know using your spouse's uh, uh, latest i7 and 7 then then you also get your i-94 extended so these are some things that can be done uh, all in all uh, you know like this is this is a, this is a very common question there are no requirements changes it all continue to be the same so that's it folks uh, thank you for watching uh, do subscribe for getting regular updates uh, we continue to update if you have any questions or comments uh, please post in the in the in the comment section thank you for watching bye bye